You were wounded. Then why didn't you keep me? I was 15. I had to do what my mama said. Even if it meant giving up the only thing I ever called my own. But you didn't stay 15. I didn't. I became a dancer and what no court was gonna give a stripper back her baby. It seems like there's always gonna be an excuse with you. I'm gonna go to bed. What's up, y'all? What is up? And welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica, but you can call me EJ. And y'all, we are going to be talking about P-Valley Season 2, Episode 3. Now, before we get into it, guys, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and motivates me to keep bringing you this content. Now, let's get into Okay, y'all. So we're not going to be doing a scene for scene breakdown or anything like that. We're just going to be talking about and highlighting some of the things that happened on the show and just discussing those things a little bit. So first and foremost, uh, I feel like this episode was like a little revelation of things in a sense, like a whole lot didn't happen, but we did learn a lot of things. Uh, for instance, we learned a little bit about Mercedes background and we also got a little more insight into Whisper and Roulette. You know, initially, I kind of thought that maybe they might have known each other because they danced so well together. But this episode definitely solidified that they didn't know each other. They just have a good chemistry, apparently. Okay, y'all, so I know a lot of y'all not really feeling Autumn and y'all feeling like she doing the most, which she was doing the most with this whole boss thing. But I think in this episode, she kind of calmed down a little bit. I think she might have seen that the club actually needs Uncle Cliff. Uh, she wasn't in straight boss mode this time. It was more so about uh, treating Uncle Cliff as a partner. So I think that their relationship it's probably going to get a little bit better. Who knows? You know, this is Uncle Cliff and Autumn we talking about. So, you know, it's probably going to go back and forth like any family. But I do think that we're taking a good step in the right direction. She did give him a more ownership of the club. So, you know, that's what's up with that. Now, y'all, why Big Bone is out here? She just she just a jack of all trades. She say she can DJ. She can work the bar. She can do whatever needs to be done. She going to be a dancer. She like doing everything I'm like dang they is tipping the the DJ <laughs> more than they tipping the dancers boy I tell you I like big bones okay y'all so initially I know I said probably in one of these videos that I was gonna like roulette but I respectfully take that shit back I really just don't like her character. She just stay breaking the rules. She just don't do right. She is not good for business. She that bitch that is going to make, you know, stuff happen to the point where they have to close down or something just because she don't know how to act right. You know what I'm saying? She just doing way too much. And y'all, did y'all see the way she looked at Duffy in that room? Like, she definitely got her eyes on him. But not only that, when that Oxycontin fell on the ground and she saw that Oxy, y'all... I don't know what she finna be up to, but it feels like it's about to be some sort of foolery. So anyway, y'all, uh, moving on to Mercedes, y'all. <laughs> Your girl Mercedes is out here living her best life. She said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take the coach up on his offer because it looks like her gym is falling behind and she needs to get back caught up with the gym. And, you know, this is her dream. This was always her end game. You know what I'm saying? This was her retirement plan. So she cannot let it go. So she going to do what she got to do. Even if that means that she going to take the coach up on his offer. Now, I know a lot of y'all out there prejudging her like a mug right now. I know this. But at least she getting 10K a weekend for, you know, what some people do for free. I'm just a messenger. I'm just putting it out there. But, you know, at the end of the day, she felt like this is what she needed to do. So, hey, and, and in my opinion, I think she did it very respectfully by making sure that the wife was in on it and making sure that she knew what was going on and that she wasn't doing no funny business behind nobody back because, you know, she ain't had time for that. So anyway, it turns out she actually got 
a bigger surprise because it feels like her and the wife really hit it off. Um, initially, the wife was a little standoffish, you know, when Mercedes says beautiful, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, everybody out there put an R in everything. And she goes on to correct her. Mercedes don't even let that phase her. She just kind of let that roll off her shoulder. But then when she talks about that painting and really lets her know, like, hey, you know, I'm I'm not what you think I am. You know what I'm saying? And then when Mercedes does her dance and she get that Mercedes experience, uh, look like the coach wife is ready to be down. Like she is all in. And I do mean all in. You know what I'm saying? So anyhow, um, that's going to be interesting to see how this whole relationship kind of goes. Cause looking at the trailer for episode three, it feels like her and Mercedes might actually get closer. So hmm, let's just see how this goes. Now, y'all, we did get to learn a little bit about Mercedes backstory in this episode as well. We learned that Mercedes had Terica when she was 15 years old. And we also learned that Mercedes told the baby's father that she was 18 years old when clearly Clearly, she was only 15. She got pregnant. It doesn't seem like the baby's father ever forgave her for that. And uh, uh, Patricia Woodbine, of course, made her give up the baby and made him raise the baby. So and he was never willing to let her back in. And so this is kind of why she uh, doesn't have Terica. And Terica gets to learn this bit of information as her mother who is raising her shell is blurting out all of these things because she's drunk she's been drinking and she learns the truth about uh about mercedes and how the whole thing happened and she mercedes also learns that the baby's father didn't want her to have terica and that he wanted Shell to continue to raise her and that he made her promise that she would. So that was another revelation that uh, came out. Now, y'all, of course, Terica asked Mercedes about it and they have a heart to heart. And, you know, Mercedes tells her everything. But Terica in turn just says, you know, you know, you weren't always 15. You know, why did you come for me, you know, after the fact? And Mercedes just says, you know, they weren't going to give a stripper a baby. And do I kind of understand that? I absolutely understand where Mercedes is coming from. But I also understand where Terica is coming from. But at the end of the day, you know, there is more to it than Mercedes just popping up and saying, hey, I want to have my daughter back. There are certain things that has to happen in order for her to be able to do so. So her being a dancer could have very well played a part in why she didn't feel she was able to step into that courtroom to ask for her daughter back. So let's just see how this develops uh, as the season goes on. Hopefully they'll be able to mend this relationship and Mercedes can get her daughter back. Now, y'all, I almost fell out my damn seat when Uncle Cliff got up on that pole, okay? Uncle Cliff said, I can get on this pole, too, y'all. Had his ass cheeks out and everything. I ain't mad at you, Uncle Cliff. I'm here for it. Okay, y'all, so um, the Dirty Dozen tour happens. Now, this is probably one of the most anticipated, in my opinion, episode uh, parts of the episode because everybody wanted to see if that infamous picture that was floating around out there actually happens in this episode. Now, look, I don't know if that picture is real. I don't know if it was doctored up. I don't know, but it didn't happen in this episode, but I don't know if it's going to happen in the future. Have no clue, but I guess we shall see. But what we did learn about Big Teak and Little Murder was that Little Murder and Big Teak were in prison together and Big Teak actually saved Little Murder's life. So he was like, you know, his protectors, so to say, uh, because if it wasn't for him, Little Murder would probably have been dead. So that's kind of where their relationship stands from. And they seem to have this really close bond. So it will be interesting to see how this develops and see where it goes and to see if that picture was real or not. We going to see, you know what I'm saying? But just not on this episode. Now, y'all, I ain't even going to lie. No cap at all. I was like, okay, y'all, let's just forgive Keyshawn and move on. I mean, she made a mistake, and you can kind of see that she's hurt by it, and you can see just from that one little statement that she makes about fairy tales, and I'm just like, dang. And then if you go back to that doggone story that she tells her daughter about the 
girls with the bundle and all that stuff. You just have to go back to that episode so you can hear it. I mean, you just got to hear it. But anyway, it just brings you back to the point that this is a woman who is abused and is hurt. And, you know, she doesn't really know how to get out of this situation. And in that moment, she made a rash decision. And yes, she made the wrong decision and hurt the very people who help her. However, you know, there is a sense of forgiveness that has to happen once she makes the right steps to do what she needs to do in order to uh, to help everybody heal. Because I feel like Keyshawn is just a part of the paint. You know what I'm saying? And they just need to forgive her and move on because roulette ain't it. And we need Miss Mississippi back. Plus, when Derek see all the stuff that was going down at on that Dirty Dozen tour, she gonna need somewhere to go anyway, y'all, because Derek finna do the fool. And hopefully her family at the Pink will be there for her and have her back because she gonna need them. Now, y'all, what the hell was going on with Pico ass? It's like he just can't let go of this ass whooping that he done got. Like, dude, you got your ass whooped. It's over with. You know, even your homeboy that's with you is not even... Like, he ain't got no beef with Lil' Murder. You know what I'm saying? Like, he giving Lil' Murder his props. But your ass is still doing the most. And Big Teak was not here for it. You know what I'm saying? First of all, he wasn't here for your switching up. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you going to be a Hurts Village hustler and then all of a sudden you going to be rocking, you know, blue and gold, as Big Teak say. You know what I'm saying? So he wasn't even here for that because that's disloyal to him. And you can tell that Big Teak is all about loyalty. Now, him and Pico get into it in the parking lot. Um, you know, and some people, some bullets start flying and stuff like that. So I don't think that we have seen the last of Pico. I think that there's going to be something else that's going to happen, something a little bit bigger. So we shall see. Now, also on this Dirty Dozen tour, we did also see that Little Murder still going through it, y'all. Like he's still going through it. He just love him some Uncle Cliff. And he just now realizing that he done missed out and that he done lost. And I really thought it was, um so sweet and romantic and cute how he was sending these postcards to her uh and then you see at the end of the episode where you know uncle cliff is like keeps all the postcards and has them hanging up so i don't think that this story is over between them yet and you know i'm here for it to see what happens now, y'all, last but not least, Patricia Woodbine is out here showing her ass again, you know, so she done went and just told the truth. Now, I can't even be mad at her about this because she was just standing on what she believed about this casino, you know, where the other preacher was faking and shaking. She was just telling the truth. And, of course, that's going to backfire on her because she is, you know, running a cult and she got all those people up in the church. I mean, her church is packed, y'all. She got all those people up in there. Uh, and, of course, that is against the city ordinance, uh, you know, because they are in a COVID area. They're supposed to be at 50 percent capacity and they're supposed to be wearing masks, et cetera. So, of course, she done got shut down because she decided to speak up. But y'all already know Patricia Woodbine ain't finna go down like that. So I can't wait to see what she finna do. You know what I'm saying? Like we can be mad at Patricia Woodbine and because of the way she treat Mercedes. But at the end of the day, I dislike that mayor, whatever his name is, Kyle. I think that's his name, Mayor Kyle. I just like his ass more than Patricia Woodbine. So I'm here for her shenanigans. Okay, y'all, so that is what's up with P-Valley Season 2, Episode 3. Let me know if you saw the episode. Let me know what you thought, especially what you thought about our girl Mercedes and her situationship with the coach. Now, y'all, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video. Until next time, peace.